pussy wet as I get late on it. If you pass me a plate, I need some steak on it. I like you trying shit, girl, nigga. I'm running past our elbow, nigga. What's up everybody, it's Adrian from Breakthrough TV. Today we got a couple special guests with us. Uh, Adrian, Kyle, uh, a couple yes, managers. They run AK, Eight Town Records. This is gonna be our very first manager interview, so I'm super excited about it. Yeah. How you guys doing today? Doing good. Yeah. Doing good, yeah. Happy yeah. to be here with the man, no, Adrian. For sure, for sure. I've known you guys for a couple years now, man, and I feel like you know, when I met you guys, you guys were already like really doing it. And now at this point, you guys have a roster full of people that are- You met us like during the concerts though, huh? Yeah, during the concerts. I think it was right before you guys had met King. Yeah. Um, and then I officially really met you guys like right when you guys had got King. I think in my city was going up. Yeah. yeah. So why don't we talk a little bit about how you guys met and decided to you know, start managing artists? Uh, me and him, we met in fourth grade. Uh, we were like both uh, kids that moved into Eastville like kind of late and then uh, all the schools were packed out so we had to take the bus to Norco and then like Norco is like a super racist school. Really. <laughs> and uh, so like me and him clicked up pretty early like on the bus going, uh, going to school on the bus every morning and then we just been close since. Uh, we were throwing parties in high school and then uh, when, once we graduated, we were like, we can't throw house parties no more. And then uh, we started throwing concerts. We did Greedo, we did Blueface, we brought out Roddy, right, uh, Roddy right before he blew, uh, blew up like wildly. Mm -hmm. We had got him for like six bands. He's probably like 150K now. Man. Mm -hmm. uh, we had got Blueface for 400. He's probably like 100K now. Greedo, and then we got Greedo for we got Greedo for a lot, but uh, it was his last show. We got him for like ten bands. Yeah, he kind of ripped us, but that's a special moment, though. Yeah, we sold this. We sold out. You know what I mean? So like, it was a good show. Yeah. But um, then we started kind of realizing, like, uh, you know what I mean? That we kind of were catching talent early. We were able to put mm -hmm. these dudes in shows early before they were blowing up. So we were like, let's start our own label. Let's start have like you feel me build up our own artists and then we can end up doing a show one day like with all our, like our artists yeah so um posted up some instagram thing one day looking for our artists and then king was actually the first artist that tapped in with me and then i just deleted the post right after that and ran the whole shit with king mm -hmm. and then off of king we just kind of grew a team like of more artists trying to join what we had going on because they seen how quick king was growing already you know yeah. what i mean and then yeah just took off really with that for sure so let's talk about that then with King. And I know he stood really going up and I know there was a lot of label meetings going on through that, right? How did it feel being like as young as you guys were at that time and doing this like real industry shit? Cause that was like your first artist. You guys are young as hell. You know what I'm saying? Was it a little nerve wracking or did you guys feel like confident about what y'all were doing? Or how was that? I was kind of like on some fake it till you make it shit, bro. Like. <laughs> I really didn't know what I was doing, but I like acted like I really knew what I was doing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then I just really learned from all my mistakes all these years to like, now that I'll be able to say, I, like, I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty good manager, because I know I, like, I, learned, I'm learned, I learned from everything, bro. Like, I, like you said, me and him, bro, we were like young as hell in every single label building, like all the major label buildings, and we were young as hell, not even really knowing the business like that, but just winging it, bro. Like, yeah. But we learned a lot, like, within all these years. Literally everything. I bet, man. How did it feel for you? Uh, shit, same. Uh, but mainly I was really learning off of him, too, because when, um, at first, when he had this run with King, and then you feel me putting me on game, and you feel me, I was at the meetings as well, so you feel me, like, after that, I was pretty confident. You yeah. feel me, so. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that. What is the dynamic between you two? Like, what do you guys feel like? How do you guys balance? Because I feel like it's hard to... Yeah, because a lot of people, people it's like one man. They, a lot of people like they're uh, they're managers for one artist. Like mm -hmm. me and him, like we kind of don't put a limit behind us. Like yeah. we'll fuck around, manage like twenty artists. <laughs> like so, like I, I can't do that solo. So like I forever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I forever need somebody to help me do that shit. Yeah, because like bro, artists will be like stressful, bro. I bet. I bet it's a lot to handle. Oh man. my. You'll blow up an artist, bro, and then, like, 
they'll act like you never did nothing for it, like for them, bro. Like, has that is that something you guys have ran into? Hella yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like there's been hella artists that you took to that like that right when they sign, they feel like they like everything before a race, like yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like you never did anything for them. They signed by like they got there by themselves. So. That, yeah, you learn, but then you have artists that are not like that, bro. They want they want the manager to eat, and they really realize everything that the uh, manager's really doing for them and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know how there's bad and good. No, now. for sure. <clears throat> I feel like, at least for me personally, I feel like it's easier to grow, too, when you have that team that's been there, you know, from the jump, rather than jumping into, like, a team of a bunch of people you don't know or don't know, exactly. like, who you are, how you grew up, and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... What are some things that you guys feel you've learned since that time from jumping in that like really important things? Man, um, pretty much because at first we were just messing with the artists off of just the strength of like, we're young. So we were like, okay, like we'll just build up together. So what we really learned is putting that contract, mm -hmm. really signing them first and then working. Yeah. So that's been like a big like thing for us. Yeah. Cause we would like, we would be like, like friends with the artists pretty much. You know what I mean? Like, like we came into the game, like we moved the artists in, artists would live with us. Yeah, yeah. Every day we're together, every day we're doing shit together. We grew, we grew like, we grew like a brotherhood, but of course. sometimes like, it's not really good to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't really mix business with, uh, with the friendship. And then like, you know what I mean? You just gotta, it's gotta be all business, business bro. First, yeah. So, uh, for sure learn that we've learned so many things bro we learned to like pretty much make sure everything is like owned by us like mm -hmm. you feel me we before we would never buy beats and shit like you know what i mean just, yeah. just different little things that you got to do that really mean a lot in the mm -hmm. end like uh just a lot of shit bro i've learned a lot yeah um i'm trying to think though what are some maybe like big issues that you run into that really change the course of the way you guys do things like specific moments for sure the contract thing that's just structured a lot um, we kind of like push back from management we don't really like being managers no more we kind of like uh, more of a label production company oh, okay. like yeah like the ma we kind of yeah we kind of just stood away from them i feel like we elevated from the manager role you know okay. what i mean and if anything, we could have, like, we'll build a management company that will have managers under us, but mm -hmm. we kind of just became CEOs off of, like, all the different shit just to make sure we get everything we deserve because I feel like, like, me and him, our, our success rate is, like, wild when it comes to artists. Like, mm -hmm. we done blew, like, eight artists in the last two years, like, yeah. fully record label, like, changed the artist's whole life type of blow up, so... Yeah, we just kind of, yeah, we're like, I, I feel like we changed from the manager to the whole CEOs type yeah. shit now. How do you guys feel that, that, you know, you do that with that success rate? Do you think it's because of your business knowledge and how to move through the industry and make people pop? Or do you feel like it's, you guys have like a golden ear and you're finding these fucking diamonds in the rough? We have the golden ear. I feel like that for sure. And, uh, um, I know, for, like, we stay hip to the game, bro. Like, whatever's, as soon as TikTok was the shit, I learned TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then I was like, once we learned, I learned TikTok, we look, I just kind of, we, we kind of put it into our shit and then boom, look it. Like, mm -hmm. TikTok's still that thing right now. So as soon as that new thing pops up, we're going to be back on it, like, trying to just keep, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And then me and him, we, uh, we started our own distribution company now. Mm -hmm. So, like, we will forever need a distribution company. Like yeah. people will forever need to release their music. Yeah. So that's kind of like another way we had changed too. Okay. So do you think like it's a formula that you guys have now, or does it still depend like on per artist? It's per artist per for artist. sure. Yeah. Per artist. Yeah. So what are some what are some examples like? Let's say, cause who's on you guys' roster right now? Man, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot. It's, it's a, a lot, lot, bro. We're like it's a di we're like a distribution company now, so like we're damn near watching over like over a hundred artists. Now. Oh, okay, so Who, like, do you guys deal with all these artists like by hand? Like you guys are watching like their every move? Because I know like MCM, for example, I know you guys can listen yeah. like every day. Mm -hmm. You know, 
working with him. Is it like that with every artist? No. No, it's okay. not. No. So, so which artists are you working with like that? King, MCM. Um, I got like a whole little new little roster like Dom from LP. I just locked in this dude that uh, works with like Peso and Money Sun Sway, uh, Luda. Oh yeah, Luda. Um, what's it called? I'm working with Go Get It KB. Uh, we're about to release some shit. Mm -hmm. um, shit, got Dev still on our roster. Uh, got him at Capital. A lot more, yeah, but yeah, 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 more. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to forget one. And be funny. Oh God, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But. <laughs> I don't want to forget one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. It seems like you guys got a lot on your plate. Does it? Does the stress ever get to you guys? Is it stressful? Uh, yes. Yeah. Because dealing with different artists, we have different emotions, different personalities, mm -hmm. and then some of them might not listen. Because they, you feel me? They might not listen. So you gotta like, like pretty much like, still be there for them, but like let them go see first, and then. Then show them like, bro, you, like you feel me? Like, this is what I was trying to tell you. So, you feel me? So it's just different personalities, different emotions. Yeah, it's for sure stressful, bro. Cause I feel like when we first started, we were like thinking managers were like what labels do. Mm -hmm. So like we were kind of on the house and them like, like managers don't do that yeah, usually. Yeah, yeah. Like managers really just handle music and then they they barely are around and shit. Like we took the management role to like a everyday thing, mm -hmm. like. Okay. Every day we're with the artists and like our money, like everything that we have, we're investing into that artist. Like labels do that, so that's why we kind of just moved up because mm -hmm. we we're doing too much in that management role. Yeah. So what does your guys' like day to day look like now that it's not all management? It's still on the same shit, truly, bro. Yeah. So what's an average like busy day for you guys? Like video, video studio. Man, uh, just like different things with different artists. Yeah, like we're singly like trying to blow up each artist yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. like. So literally we have like different plans for each artist. So it's just like crazy. Yeah. So every day it's like working on each plan with mm -hmm. each artist. And there's like already like so many artists. Yeah. But I love it, shit, shit's fun. Nah, for sure. I, it looks fun, honestly. And you guys, like you said, you have a high success rate, so it's like, why would you stop doing that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so for people that, you know, like kids in high school or <clears throat> young people that want to be in the position that you guys are in, what do you guys think it takes to be a good manager? Uh, uh, pretty much what it takes to be a good manager. I feel like you just gotta one stay hip to the music and like pretty much like kind of provide like different opportunities for your artists such as like man help me uh <laughs> shit I'll, I'll, it's kind of like hard to say but it's just like it's easy to do it's for me i feel like yeah. i feel like a good a good manager really um helps like i feel like an artist should really just be focused on writing music and all that shit and then the manager really just fully does everything around it yeah, sure. but then again when a man a artist has like that business um, mindset too with the manager mm -hmm. they fuck up the game together like that's why i always say like a, a artist has to be on the same tip as the manager too because if you guys are both putting in that work you guys might guys kill it limit. Yeah. yeah what's uh have you guys ever had to have like difficult conversations with certain artists because of stuff like that is, is that yeah, like we always have shit like that, bro. I'm telling you, bro, we work with so many people, and like even before, like old artists that we've had, like, we've had so many different combos. Me and him had to sit people down, like, just to talk, like, it's serious, bro. You're damn near, like, damn near having, like, kids, kind of, bro, yeah. a little bit. You feel me? Yeah, no, for sure. Because, like, you really got to watch over the artists and make sure, like, some artists are, like, you feel me, on their shit, and some artists kind of fuck around a little bit, like, mm -hmm. He's gotta like be, you kind of just can't be, you gotta not leave their side. It's like literally like a parent type shit. Yeah, yeah. Brother, sure. like, you know what I mean? So, what's some advice that you guys would give to artists that kind of like seeking a manager or looking for something like that? 
Like looking for a manager? Yeah, like what's some advice you guys would give to artists? Let's say like somebody wanted to come work with you guys, right? Um, what would you tell them? Like what to look for in a manager or like how to get to how, it? How they should be in order for like the relationship to work. Oh, yeah, to listen to their manager for yeah, sure. Yeah, listen. Be open-minded like what they got to say. You feel yeah. me? There's been times where like, like I'll even say it like with King, like he listened to me like, uh, with the whole high power beat, like mm -hmm. you feel me? He never had heard Biggie songs really before, like oh, that or nothing. Nah. And then I had I had told him like let's low key sample this and like do it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? He really never heard of it. and He was just with it. And then that shit ended up doing like a meal a week when it was out. Like yeah. And like really labels violent. started tapping in like crazy and shit. And he even like was like damn that's crazy that we had came up with. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. But it's just being open minded. A lot of artists will, like think they're like just have that negative look on their manager off the look, mm -hmm. like just off the rip, like no, not really. listening to what they got to say and shit. And yeah. they really are caring about them type shit. Yeah, and um, yeah, for sure they listen to your manager. And um, what he said, be open minded, just because I had a situation too uh, with an artist, and that uh, he wasn't trying to listen to me about the song that he had and I was trying to tell him like, bro, that song is a hit and he was not listening and I damn near had to force it onto him. You feel me? And then we dropped it and then that song hit Billboards, Hot 100. It just got nominated for VMA. You feel me? So, you feel me? So, yeah, really listen to your manager. <laughs> Have faith in your manager. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? that, that's crazy. Because so. you never know. Yeah, that's crazy. And those are just like two situations, bro. There's so many situations like that where, you know, I me mean? we told the artist to listen. You know I me, mean? that's, that's why I fuck with my my dog. You be know yeah, listening. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, no, I know. Because I, so they were our first ever documentary, day to day type thing. Which I got a lot of love for them before. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, MCM was with you guys. That that's when we too. were living at Airbnbs, yeah, bro. Yeah. When they came and shit. Yeah, no, that shit was viral though. That shit was fire. If you haven't seen it, go watch that. Yeah. But um, so, what's the end goal for you guys? You guys have come a long way since that moment two years ago. What's what's the plan for the future? Just trying to break more records, bro. I'm yeah. trying to like have like where we post and we got like three songs on the Billboard yeah. at the same time type shit, like. I'm trying to be like that. Just break more records, truly, bro. We're like shooting for the stars. Yeah. So you guys trying to be like QC type vibe? Better than QC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's not QC is fire though. <laughs> for sure, look up to them. Yeah. No. They, I think they, you know, they paved the way for a lot of people doing this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? But um, for sure, man. Well, I thank you guys for the conversation. I think you guys dropped a lot of good gems okay. today. I've been waiting for this. Nah, for real. <laughs> a lot of people needed to like. This is for the managers, bro. Yeah, no, nah, for real. A lot of people know you guys as artists. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's good for people to get a chance at looking at the people that yeah. kind of like help them get to where they are. Shouts out all the artists, bro. Yeah, they nah, stuck with us, especially. So, listen to your managers. All right. All right, y'all. I <laughs> appreciate y'all for coming through. Now I'm about to go catch this dub and beer palm. So we'll see how that goes. No, he's not. <laughs> All right. So yeah, whenever you guys are ready, let's do it. It's our first, you go, you go. our first two v one game. Let's see how it goes. It's too strong. Probably chase me. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta distract the homie though. He's too good. Like it's not gonna work. <laughs> Is this shit bounceable? You can bounce it, but if you bounce it, that means I can slap it. <laughs> I'm scared to throw too buff, like, you feel me? <laughs> like, I don't want to throw hard. Oh. Damn. Damn. Got it. Oh. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to do it. Right, here we go. Oh, <laughs> that would have counted that too, man. For sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, that shit is not balanced. You know who got one on me? Javi. Really? Javi got a bounce on me. Yeah. Oh my God. We're about to get whooped, Kyle. <laughs> He's bad. <laughs>
We gotta go in. Damn, I think I'm wetting it too much. I think that's what it is. I think we're just not good. <laughs> 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 Alright, right, you guys can come back. No! <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay. Let's end them, God. Come on. Back to back. Get in the middle. Oh, oh, come on. Man. Get, get next Somebody time. Somebody fouled me. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that, though. Why you grab me like that? Ain't no oh, way. Man. Ain't no Let's way. See. Let's see. Oh, man. So if I make this one, that means y'all gonna make two in a row. Don't make that, though. Take it easy. Promises. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Alright, bro. I'm coming back solo trained. <laughs> You're not gonna see Agent for three months. Oh yeah. So you man has a lot of pressure right here. Oh, okay. oh, oh that, was, that was still a good game. They almost had the comeback, bro. But I had to take the W. I'm sorry, y'all. It was a good match. Good game, good game. Appreciate you. Good game. Yeah, yeah. Good shit. Damn. Break the TV. The A Town managers. That's a wrap. That's cool. I'm that nigga. Cold as fuck.